Hi, my name is Seth Ladd, and today on Dart Tips, we talk about exceptions. You know, those errors that bubble up from deep within the bowels of your program and tell you where something went wrong. Watch this episode so you won't be caught off guard the next time you run into a problem. Let's get started. Dart uses exceptions when an error or other exceptional event occurs inside your program. When a situation arises that cannot be handled by the program or runtime, for example, when the system runs out of memory or invalid input was provided, normal program execution stops and an exception is created. This exception object is then thrown down the call stack looking for someone to catch it. If no code handles the exception, the program exits. Common error cases include out of memory, invalid input, incorrect state transitions, meaningless arguments, and more. The Dart SDK classifies most problems as errors and thus most of the exception class names in the SDK end with error. The name error is shorter than exception and generally it's nothing exceptional about many of the problems. They are flat out errors as in don't do it. For this video we'll use the name exception to mean errors or exceptions thrown by the program or runtime. Normally you know an exception or error has occurred when you encounter a stack trace. They look something like this. This report has useful information to help you determine what happened and where it happened. For example we know there was an unhandled exception. The exception was bad state, door already closed. The problem occurred inside the open door method at line 14 in episode 09.dart. I feel like it's a game of Clue in the parlor with the candlestick on line 14. We can also trace the execution of the program from the main function to the open door method. This is very useful information when diagnosing and debugging exceptions. OK, with that introduction, let's look at some code. There are four specific concepts to explore, throw, try, catch, and finally. Each shows up a syntax that you can use in your program. In general, exceptions in Dart aren't that invasive. For example, you can throw any non-null object. Dart methods and functions do not declare the exceptions they can throw, and you aren't required to catch for exceptions a method might throw. To signal an error or exception has occurred, use throw. This is also known as raising an exception. Here's an example. If the door is locked, you can't open it, so the program signals this problem by throwing an instance of state error. Remember, you can throw any non-null object as an exception. The Dart SDK ships classes for many common exceptions, and you can extend the exception class to create your own more specific exceptions. For example, you may want to create a specific door locked error class. Here's an example. We'll cover classes in a future episode, but for now it's enough to understand that door locked error is a specific type of state error. When an object is thrown, the current function or method does not continue, and the exception object travels through the stack looking for someone to handle it. Normally, you should handle exceptions gracefully and provide some sort of mitigation or feedback to the user. Use the catch clause to capture exceptions. Here's an example. Wrap any code that might throw an exception inside of a try block. Exceptions thrown from within the try block are handled by the catch block. The exception variable is the exception object itself. The stack trace object is, no surprise here, the stack trace. It's important to note that if open door throws an exception, then enter is never called. Control of the program jumps to the catch block on exception. If an exception is caught, you will see the following output. The first line is the exception object, and the following lines are from the stack trace object. Here's a short example. You can, of course, name these variables however you like. You can even omit the stack trace. Some methods can throw different exceptions based on different conditions. For example, the enter method can throw a state error if the door is not open, or it can throw an argument error if the expected argument is null. Here's how you catch different types of exceptions. You can use on to specify what kinds of exceptions you want to catch. You can specify multiple on clauses, and you can specify catch all as the last catch clause. You can use on or catch or both. If you don't care about the actual exception object, you can omit catch. Sometimes you need to ensure code runs no matter what, whether or not an exception is thrown. Use the finally clause to make sure code is always run. Here's an example. If no exception is thrown, finally runs. If an exception is thrown from within the try clause, catch runs, and then finally runs. In this example, the room is always reset. To recap, Dart has familiar try, catch, finally clauses. You can throw any non-null object as an exception, and many common error cases are found in the Dart SDK. You can have many catch clauses for a try clause, each for a specific exception type. The finally clause runs whether or not an exception was thrown. Client code is not forced to catch for exceptions, so it's up to you to determine when and how to handle potential errors. Thanks for watching. I'm Seth Ladd, and as we say here on Dart Tips, stay sharp. Click here to subscribe to our channel for more episodes of Dart Tips. We appreciate any thoughts you might have for the series. Please leave them in the comments below. And if you have any additional questions about Dart, please drop by Stack Overflow, where Dart experts are standing by to help you out. See you next time.